I'm Luke Ross and welcome to another Baselight Insight on MixingLight.com. In this insight, we're going to have a look at the Hue Shift tool and the Compressed Gamut tool and how we can use them to fix abnormal or overly saturated colors. We're going to take a look at chromatic aberration and just overly saturated or wacky colors. And we're going to use these two tools to get a great result in Baselight. Let's get into it. Okay, so in our base light scene here, we've got two shots. We've got our first zombie shot here, which is looking very overly saturated. And if we zoom in to the edges, you can see we've got some pretty intense chromatic aberration. And also, just in general, um, our colors are very, very saturated. So that's our first job to fix. In the second shot, this is a pretty normal looking shot, but we'll just do a minor color adjustment um, to this picture frame. The Hue Shift tool in particular can do some really isolated color adjustments. Let's start off with our zombie shot. And the first thing that we should do to fix the um, colors and the chromatic aberration in this shot is to just apply a balance grade just to get the overall color balance and saturation looking a little bit better. The first thing we're gonna do is add a grading layer with the keyboard shortcut P. I'm going to scroll into the middle of the shot just so we can get a good look at these skin tones. And with the balance tool, I'm just going to make a pretty heavy adjustment into the cyan green area of the scopes. Again, just looking at these skin tones, wanting to balance that out a little bit. Using the mouse wheel to scroll up and down, I can see that that adjustment is doing wonders for the skin tones. Might just push a little bit of warmth back into the shadows. What I'll also probably do is by clicking and dragging in an anti-clockwise fashion, I'll just turn the saturation down just a touch. Fitting my image to my display with function F12, this is looking a lot more balanced in the skin tones. And the saturation is looking a little bit better too. Now there are two issues that I want to address. First of all, because of that balance, the garage door has become quite blue. I think this actually looks quite cool, but for the sake of keeping things clean, we want to desaturate this blue just a little bit. But also, there is still a lot of chromatic aberration, a lot of this purple and green fringing um, that we want to try and get rid of. So let's go ahead and add another grade layer. The first tool that we're going to look at is the Hue Shift tool. The Hue Shift tool is a really useful tool that allows you to make hue, saturation, and if you come over to this tab, value adjustments based on specific ranges of color. So for example, if I jump back to the Hue Saturation tab, I can change the hue of my cyan blue parts of my image by going over to the hue controls and literally just clicking and dragging on the slider. And you can see that I'm adjusting it more cyan and more purple as I adjust the slider up and down. Also, with my saturation sliders, I can do the same with saturation. I can make the blue cyan areas of my image even more saturated or even less saturated. And again, if we do this on the cyan tab, we can see that really strongly. Now to counterbalance some of our balancing from our first layer, I'm just going to desaturate the cyan portions of the image, but also a little bit of the blue parts of the image as well. Zooming in here, if we use our mouse wheel to scroll up and down, you can see that's really taking away some of that blue saturation. The last thing we need to address is that chromatic aberration on the edges. Uh, so let's have a look at that. If we zoom in here, even though we've desaturated this image, the purple and green is still quite intense. For this really saturated green here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with the Hue Shift tool and just desaturate some of these green tones, because I know that there's not much green elsewhere in the image. Previewing on and off, I can see I'm definitely reducing some of that green, which is a good start. I could do the same here with the purple. So if I go ahead and drag this purple slider down, you can see that I'm quite effectively removing some of that purple. So again, you can see the difference all the way boosted and then all the way taken away. But I'm actually gonna reset this parameter because I wanna show you the compress gamut tool, which is another really useful tool in your toolbox to fix issues just like this. I can add a compress gamut strip in one of two ways. Um, the first way, I can go up to my curve grade tool which is a tool that I don't really use all that often, I can right click this parameter, go change operator type, and change this operator to anything that I would like. In this case, compressed gamut. The benefits of putting this compressed gamut operator into my inside outside layer is that I can use this in conjunction with shapes and other mats to confine this tool. The other way that you could add a compressed gamut operator is in the insert menu, 
and you can go ahead and add that here. The issue with having a separate strip in the timeline is that it's a little bit harder to confine to a mat. So again, I prefer to add it into my inside outside layer. Whether you do it this way or adding a separate strip, the tools are exactly the same. I'm gonna hide my layer grading operators and I'm gonna zoom in onto this purple here and let's have a chat through what this tool does. This tool is all about finding out of gamut colors and restricting them back into gamut. So it makes sense that we have a gamut adjustment here that we can use to select the appropriate gamut. For now, I'm just gonna leave this at Rec 2020. The gamut alarm option allows you to pinpoint exactly which colors are out of gamut based on your current settings. So uh, when you enable this, all of the unmodified colors, all of the in gamut colors will be gray and only the out of gamut pixels maintain the original color value. So if you've got some really wacky colors, you can turn on the gamut alarm and it will show you quite clearly what those colors are on the display. For now though, we're gonna leave the gamut settings and focus on these four sliders. This first chroma threshold slider is the intensity of this operator. If I drag this all the way to one, and I'm gonna really zoom in on these pixels here, you can see that it's having a pretty good effect to reduce some of that purple. I'm gonna up my magenta limit, and you can see that as I slide this up, this has an effect on how much of those purple hues are getting targeted and desaturated. So I'm gonna leave the magenta limit around 0 0.55. It's also useful to note that down the bottom of the parameters view, there's an extended ranges toggle. If we click this, this will allow us to bump all of these parameters even further. So if I crank this all the way to the top now, and we zoom out with function F12, you can see this is affecting a lot more than what we want it to in this case. I'm gonna leave the extended ranges off for now and just keep this at maximum. As you can see, that's done a pretty good job at eliminating some of that green and purple chromatic aberration. And if we look at the entire image, we'll lasso our two clips, hit function command F11 to bypass. You can see it's looking a lot more balanced. Quickly jumping to the next shot, if we apply a quick balance to the second shot, jumping to the film grade, adding a bit of contrast, adding a bit of saturation, going to base grade and just balancing the shot out a little. I'm gonna quickly show you another example in where the hue shift tool can save you from pulling a qualifier key and can make a tiny tweak uh, to shift some colors back into the area that you want them. So this image is looking good, but say for example, the client is requesting that this blue background is more of a cyan saturated background. So we can use the hue shift tool to make the required adjustments and then add a shape to constrain that adjustment to this picture frame. To do that, I'm gonna to jump to the hue shift operator. I'm going to go to my blue hue control and I'm gonna push it towards sign. So in one small moment, we've uh, changed the hue, pushed it towards sign, and it's actually already looking a little bit more saturated. So I think that's job done. Just in case we're affecting any other part of the image, which I don't think we would be in this case, but just, just to make sure, we're gonna add a shape to this image using the keyboard shortcut S. And with our freehand mode enabled, we're just going to draw around this picture frame. Hitting O to toggle on overlay, Shift O to toggle through our modes. Just gonna increase the feather. Hitting F12. Playing through the shot, we've made a targeted hue adjustment, and then we've confined that hue adjustment via a shape for a really quick client request to swing a color in a slightly different direction. And that's it everyone, that's the hue shift tool and the compress gamut tool. Hopefully you find those useful in your grading. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and we'll see you in the next insight. For mixinglight.com, I'm Luke Ross.